Welcome everybody back to Boost Emotion guys and today I actually want to talk about something a little different. We talk about how to gain horsepower on our VQ or VR30 motors from adding superchargers, turbochargers, uh, downpipes, test pipes, cat back exhaust, intakes, all of that stuff, right? In E85, right? But we actually never really talked about some of the old school methods, right? And me being a little bit of an older cat, from being back in the maximum days, front wheel drive, there's a few other things you had to do to make your cars quicker. Cause I had a 190 horsepower maximum. So yes, I needed every little bit of horsepower or regain horsepower as much as I can. So definitely guys, watch this video. I'm just gonna teach you some of the methods that are already out there on the market, but I just wanna share with you guys because this is from my what experience, what I've learned that worked and you guys could try it out. So otherwise than that, let's get into the video. All right, guys, so let's talk about how to actually reduce some of the weight in your car, right? Now, some of the old school methods is to take out the driver's seat and all this stuff, but some people are actually against that because it takes out some of the creature comfort of the car. You're making it less luxurious by taking the weight out. So some of the things I used to like doing back in my Maxima days was, well, take the passenger seat out, the door panels and all that. But there's a few other little tricks that I've definitely done, especially when I go to the drag strip and also me just being everyday driving. Number one, th this could apply for the, th the 3.7, but I also could apply it to just any car. Um, drive with the car about halfway full on gas. So some of you guys probably drive often and have to drive 40, 50, 60 miles a day. So I understand why you guys may keep your, your, your tanks full. Makes sense. Less stops to the pump, makes sense. But if you, let's say you like to do a lot of spirited driving, like some other people, one of my recommendations is keep the tank about quarter to a halfway full or even a third. This will do, I believe every um, gallon, uh, yeah, every gallon of gasoline is about 6.7 uh, pounds. And our tanks usually are between 16 and 18 gallons. So if you reduce it to about eight, just you're probably saving yourself, I would assume, 60 to 70 pounds of weight out of your car already. Just alone, a small child or whatever the case might be. Or you can even go as far as saying, up to down to a quarter and you're probably saving close to close to 80 to 100 pounds just off my head just randomly rambling i think it's about 80 90 pounds whatever the case might be in gasoline now this is of course if you travel short distances and your a to b is definitely a lot shorter but this allows your car to have less weight on the wheels and have just quicker acceleration some of you guys have probably filled your tank up all the way to the top and you notice the car isn't as agile and our isn't as fast as it is uh regularly but once you start getting down to the half a tank the quarter tank definitely you notice the car is quicker the second trick i actually do uh with my car is um i like wheels so i've always been a wheel guy some people know me since my maximum days i just like getting nice wheels so i always try my best to always get lightweight wheels so some of my favorite wheels back in the day, which is still now, is like RPF ones. Now I had RPF ones on my G, and those my G at the time had came with the 17-inch wheels with I um, believe uh, regular non-run flat tires. They were heavy. When I weighed them, I think it was about 68 pounds. The 60, I think it was 68 or 66, something somewhere around there. Then I went with the RPF ones. They were 19 by uh, 10. Uh, 25, 22, 22 offsets. And then I went with, I believe, I forgot the tire. But when I weighed it at that time, unfortunately, I wish I would have started this YouTube channel way back then because I probably would have been having so much information out there. But anyways, um, those wheels were about 19 pounds for a 19 inch wheel. And the tires, I believe about 25 pounds. So it lowered the amount of weight of my wheel and tire setup for almost 20 pounds. I believe 20 pounds every corner. That reduced the total curb weight of the car 80 pounds too, technically. So if you add an addition from saving 60 to 80 pounds of gasoline and then also saving weight on the wheel and tire setup, this also reduces rotational mass, whatever the case might be, which also harms the amount of power that goes down to the wheels. Um, I already saved 160 pounds of weight off the car. I'm about 165, 170 pounds, I'm 6'1". So that's a whole nother person not sitting in the passenger seat. So that's another way of how I actually save a lot of weight in my car. Now, um, just to speak majority about my car, the same thing applies to my wheels and tires. Once again, I, my wheels are wet sports and about 20 pounds each. And the tires were actually very light tires. They call for, they're from their old tire performance tires from Barum. And they were about 24 pounds. So yes, 
Once again, my wheel and tire setup is the same on this on this car too. And I always aim for that. I always try my best to aim for somewhere in the low 40s. You really can't go much more lower. You might be able to go with an 18 inch RPF one or a few other wheels that are about 18 inches and they could be under 20 pounds, but it's very hard to find a tire that's under 20 pounds too. So right around, you're gonna be right around uh, the 40 something, whatever the case might be, pounds per wheel with tire and air and everything in play, which is pretty cool. Now, here's another thing that you guys can do. If you have, some, most of the people who have the BBKs, right? You have the Sport Acubenos, or you might even have the Brembos from the, the say, 350Z guys that might be watching, or the G35 guys may be watching. And for the G37, 370Z wheels, um, those 14-inch rotors are relatively, really heavy. So another thing you can do is to reduce the amount of rotational mass and weight is to go with a two-piece rotor set. There are a few companies out there these rotors are actually pretty expensive. Maybe I'll make a second video just talking about the different rotors out there, but the majority of them are all high quality two piece rotor sets. From what I can see per rotor, you're gonna save between 10 to about six pounds between the front and the back. The front, I believe you save close to about 10 pounds and the rear you save around six pounds each corner. So just all in all 10 and 10, um, plus 12, that's about 32 pounds saved just in rotational mass on just, um, excuse me, on just ch swapping out the rotors to a better two-piece design, lightweight rotors. They are expensive, but this, well, if you keep adding this stuff up, guys, now just think about it. We're still adding here. You save 80 pounds from gasoline. You also save 80 pounds of rotational mass and curb weight. And it also, it does apply to the rotors too. So now you save almost 200 and, I don't know, 232 pounds, whatever the case might, not 232 pounds, I'm way completely off there, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you saved them um, 192 pounds on the curb weight of your car and you already saved, in rotational mass, you saved about, was that 80? 80, 80 plus the 32, that is 112, right? Yeah, 112 in rotational mass. This will drastically change how your car drives and how fast it accelerates and how quickly it presses the brake. That is insane. That's almost 200 pounds of weight reduced in the car. When they do the curb weight design of our cars, right? There's nobody inside the car. They usually, depending on the company, but they usually make sure all the fluids are topped off and I believe they have the gas tank full. That's from what I remember reading. But other auto manufacturers actually sometimes put specific amount of luggage in the trunk too, just to, to, to kind of offset. I don't know why they do it. I, I believe like Audi or Volkswagen does that. But I believe with Infiniti, that's when all the fluids are topped off and the gasoline that's full tank with 18 gallons or whatever the case might be. So once I learned that, I was like, this is pretty cool. And it made me understand how we can reduce the amount of weight in our car to increase our acceleration and just have a better driving feel. So definitely, this is some of the tricks that I've definitely done. I mean, you can definitely do other tricks as like move passenger seats if you go into the drag strip and all that. I don't really care to do that stuff, type of stuff because I want to drive the car the way it came. Luxurious. You know, it's a luxurious car. No matter if you even have a maximum, it doesn't matter. The way the car came. I don't really believe in removing all these panels and stuff unless you, you know, you have a Mustang, a Camaro. These guys do that type of stuff. But as a daily driver, I want, you know, to gain these free wheel horsepower and make my car just more, more quicker, more assertive in my type of driving, whatever the case might be. But I really, some of you guys can definitely go home and give this a shout out and just comment below and tell me what your experience was. It's necessarily just free horsepower. You're regaining horsepower or and or you know, with the rotational mass and the better tires and lighter tires and lighter wheels, but the car just feels a lot better and a lot better planted. Um, there are a few other things you could do that could go even a little bit more extreme. Um, you could talk about the exhaust system now, right? The stock catalytic converters, well, I, always, I always destroy that name, but the stock cats for um, your VQ car or even your VR car, usually gonna be full of um, cat material. Once you switch, switch over just to the pipe material, usually you'll lose weight there too on the, pretty much the curb weight or the exhaust. That's all additional weight. The same thing for the cat backs too. If you go with a good high quality cat back, most of the times it's gonna be lighter than the stock cat back. And our rear section mufflers are always gonna be heavy. So any aftermarket that you go with, 
For instance, when I came from the stock muffler to the stealing ones, the stealing axle back that I went, I believe the stealing ones altogether was like 22 pounds, but the stock muffler was about, um, muffler back was about, I believe, 35 pounds. So I saved about almost 10, pound, uh, 10 to 15 pounds just off the swapping to a better axle back. You know, so there's plenty of ways to reduce the weight of your car and regain this amount of power or 60 foot or 0 to 60s or even a quarter mile times because the less weight you have in the car, the quicker it will be. There's, a, there's always going to be a threshold, but I don't want you guys stripping everything out your car like, yeah, you know, now I'm going to be the fastest car. At some point, it will just, the car won't be that fun to drive. It's going to be loud and creaky and stuff. Don't take away the creature comforts. So otherwise than that, guys, this is some of the modifications that I've definitely done with the car. And I just wanted to share with you guys on how I pretty much made the car quicker pretty much for free. I mean, some of you guys may ask me too, what about the non-sports and the non-sport um, guys? What can, we got, what can you guys do for like your uh, uh, rotors or brakes? You really can't do anything because we're just stuck with steel rotors. So I just wanted to just throw that in there randomly because you know, I'm a non-sport guy. You guys, you guys hear me talking about red sports and stuff like that and then cars who have the BB stock standard BBK. But otherwise than that guys, I um, just wanted to make this video talking about how some ways you can save some of the weight in your car and pretty much just have a better driving experience and just enjoy the car a lot better. Otherwise than that guys, you can contact me at Boost Motion on Instagram, Boost Motion on Facebook and also send me an email at BoostMotion at gmail.com. Otherwise than that guys, you have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Thank you guys, you have a good day.